time Rota settled into immobility as the sound of the TARDIS engine died into silence. The dim light from the many candlesticks and lamps that surrounded the central console did illuminate its readings, but those readings made no sense to the Doctor as he studied them. Nowhere! He expostulated aloud, addressing the Time Rota. This can't be nowhere. Don't you know you spiked Milligan? Everybody got to be somewhere. One of his most profound statements, I've always thought. Even if most people miss the profundity because they're too busy laughing at the way it's said. And of course you know what Descartes said, don't you? I think, therefore I am. Therefore I'm doing it somewhere. So this has to be somewhere. Well, I suppose the best way to find out where is to go and look. He took the three steps leading to the threshold of the door in a single stride, passed between the two flame-bearing statues that flanked it, and stepped outside. Well, well, well. It's definitely somewhere. He thumped the TARDIS door with the side of his fist. I exist physically and so do you. A corporeal reality requires a corporeal setting. So this is the place. What place, I wonder? He stared around him, registering the impression of vastness conveyed by his surroundings. A vastness without quantifiable dimensions, bounded, if that was the appropriate word, by amorphous and aqueous clouds that slowly but constantly swelled into bulges of opalescence before shrinking again, or else attenuating into wisps that gradually dissolved into nothing. If you feel obliged to have a name for it, I suppose the futurity chasm is as good as any. The doctor turned round. A large extrusion of cloud was extending toward him. When it withdrew again, a familiar figure was revealed. Dasterium walked toward him on billowing nacre. What is the futurity chasm? Difficult to describe in words. Mathematics would probably be a more useful language for the purpose. You could call it prospective time, or potential futures, rendered into a form visible to the material eye. Did you interfere with the TARDIS somehow to bring me here? The instruments aren't showing any location coordinates for this. This place. This place that isn't a place. Interfere with the TARDIS? She reached out to touch the blue surface delicately for a moment. I wouldn't dare. As for bringing you here, why would I do that? Because there's something about the future. My future. That you're very interested in, isn't there? A potential future you want to bring about, perhaps? The Doctor shook his head darkly. It's dangerous to manipulate time. It's too brittle, too easily broken. Unless you know how to handle it. An ability which you feel only a Time Lord can possess. And you, above all others. Dusterium raised one eyebrow. Don't you remember me telling you not to be so parochial about that? She began to walk, very slowly, as if following the edge of an invisible circle that was centred on him. I also remember you telling me it would be easy to mistake me for something I wasn't, and that it would be easy to make the same mistake with you. So assuming you're not what you appear to be, I think it's high time I asked again. Who or what are you? Enigmatic would be a good description, I'd say. Wouldn't you? Not to mention evasive and frustrating. The Doctor supplemented. A small bulge of cloud reached out from the ceaselessly moving surface surrounding them, but he made a brushing gesture with his hand and it dissipated. He turned slightly, tracking her as she circled him. That's exactly the sort of answer I was expecting. But well, why? That's what I can't work out. Because you never give me enough to go on. Why do you keep playing this endless guessing game? She pulled up short and faced him. Not endless, Doctor. She contradicted. Suddenly very serious. Nothing is endless. So was the end in sight. And I like the dark. I know, Duster M interrupted, her mouth curving momentarily into a smile. I've had a look inside the TARDIS. A gothic decor matched only by its gothic lighting levels. I like the dark, the Doctor repeated with slightly forced patience. But I have distinctly mixed feelings about being kept in it. You said this place is a physical representation of all potential futures. Are we talking about an actual future? My future? The one you keep hinting at but never come out and say it in clear. You and I are very alike, Doctor. We think alike. So it should hardly be surprised that we do, and sometimes must, employ the same modus operandi. Wisps of opalescent vapour drifted past her face like a veil. She ignored them, keeping her eyes fixed on him. 
How often have you hinted to someone about their future without being explicit? And how often has that been not by choice, but because foreknowledge carries with it too high a degree of risk? I'm a Time Lord. I know about those sorts of risks, and I consider trusting me to manage them. Doesn't managing involve manipulation? You accused me of manipulating time. Not so, Doctor. Awareness and foreknowledge aren't the same as manipulation. Do you remember our encounter two regenerations ago beside the lake? Think of someone standing looking at the surface of that lake. If there was a sudden splash and they saw ripples spreading across the surface of the water, wouldn't they look to see what made them? So when I see ripples in time, I look to see who or what has made them. And you've been responsible for more ripples than most, Doctor. Eddie's in the space-time continuum. To which I'm supposed to say, oh, is he? Yes, I've heard that one. <laughs> of course you have. But you really are something of a spectator sport, you know. One never quite knows where, when or what you're going to do next. I've been told that unpredictability is part of my charm. You'll get no argument from me. But those ripples I was talking about, if there's just one set from one centre, a small creature using the surface tension of the water to float on that lake could expect to ride them out. But what if there's more than one source of ripples? What if they're breaking out all over the lake, spreading out and colliding with each other, creating turbulence? Not ripples, but waves capable of overwhelming it. Might there not come a point where that creature can no longer manage the risks it faces? I'm not exactly a stranger to temporal complexity. Granted. Or to complex thought processes. But think back. How did you acquire your mastery of chess? It wasn't a skill you acquired instantly, was it? No. First, you had to become acquainted with the basic moves. After that, it was only through much practice over many years, gaining experience by being matched against opponents at rising levels of ability, that you achieved the necessary degree of skill, the degree that enabled you to emerge as the victor against any adversary you faced. So I don't yet have the full skill set that you think I'm going to need in this future you foresee for me. It'd be interesting to know what it is you think I'm still lacking after all these years. I prefer to focus on the qualities you have acquired, not the ones you haven't. Like you, like you as you are now, that is. I'm an optimist. As I am now? Why do you think I'm going to change? It's what you do. Seven times so far, and counting. The Doctor regarded her thoughtfully. So I'm an optimist now, but I'm going to change. And you're not going to tell me how or why, at least not yet. You're waiting for something, aren't you? What? A huge billow of nacre-hued cloud suddenly bulged out and began to enclose Dasterium as she answered him. The right moment, Doctor. I'm waiting for the right moment, she said as it enveloped her. When it withdrew again, she had gone. The Doctor nodded. Of course you are. I should have known that would be your answer. He stepped back into the TARDIS doorway and paused there turning back to look one last time at the ceaselessly moving opalescent surface of the futurity chasm. It doesn't exactly make me feel as if I'm on cloud nine, he said, as he closed the door on it.